strong-minded woman, mm -hmm. and she wanted to be convinced about everything before uh, she would uh, submit to it. Uh -huh. uh, she was not uh, one of those, you know, a lot of people thought that she was uh, a quiet follower. She just did whatever her husband told her to do. Yeah. She was not that at all. She was a very determined, very uh, firm-minded uh, person who was, uh, who wanted to be uh, convinced about everything before she uh, agreed to it. Mm -hmm. And this giving up wealth was something that was very difficult for her to accept. Uh, it took a lot of uh, effort to convince her eventually. Yeah. Also, I remember from the book that her sons had a lot of difficulty with uh, Gandhi also. Yeah, especially the older son, the oldest one, the firstborn. Uh -huh. uh, he uh, had many difficulties, and I think uh, what really happened was that uh, he stayed uh, in India with uh, uh, Gandhi's uh, older brothers and their families. Yeah. When uh, grandfather was studying in England, and then when he came to South Africa. Uh, this boy grew up in that family, and uh, I'm sure, you know, these problems that uh, grandfather was facing uh, with uh, having to start a practice, and, and that was quite a, a severe problem because the family had taken a lot of uh, loans for his education in England, Yeah. and they had to pay back all that money, and uh, they were counting on him coming back and uh, and having a lucrative practice and, and earning money and paying the loans back. But he was uh, finding it very difficult. And so I'm I'm pretty sure that these older brothers may have been uh, uh, talking derisively about him at home and taunting him for uh, not being able to do anything. And, mm -hmm. and that uh, must have affected this boy. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember was one of them wanted to go on and have further education. Yeah, he he was the one who wanted to go and have further education. And that and then it, there was this whole thing about uh, the uh, man in South Africa, a merchant, who offered a scholarship, um, uh, and uh, Gandhi, my grandfather, was. Um, in put in charge of uh, of finding um, the right student to uh, you know to mm -hmm. win the scholarship to go to England and study. Yes. And uh, so what he did was he uh, launched an essay competition, and everybody submitted their essays, and he went through all of them, and the final two uh, people who. Uh, you know, came up for the final. One of them was his son, and the other was um, the son of another friend. Mm -hmm. So they competed uh, and, yeah, fairly anyway. So everybody felt that his son had done a better job, but grandfather decided to give the scholarship to the other boy. Yeah, he was afraid. Because he was afraid that everybody would say, uh, yeah, naturally he's going to select his own son. Yeah, that he would be and, favoring him. Yeah, and he would be accused of nepotism and so on, and he didn't want to uh, do, uh, you know, open himself for that kind of uh, thing. And so he awarded the scholarship to the other boy, and that really hurt this uh, boy considerably. And, and so it you know, with all the, the background of the... Sorry? It affected him the rest of his life. Yeah, well, he then just went down the drain. After that, he became an alcoholic. And yeah, that's the one. That he walked out alcoholic. of the house yeah. and, you know, he gave up the family. And uh, he, he just ruined his own life after that. See, there are a lot of people that don't know those things, that Gandhi's children, his family, were not perfect by yeah. anything. Yeah. Everybody had their own problems. Mm-hmm. Living with someone like that, I believe it would it would be very difficult anyway. Yeah, my father, who was the closest to him, uh, and uh, he had devoted his time to working uh, for 
uh, non-violence in South Africa after grandfather went back to India. Mm-hmm. He had a hard time uh, doing that because, you know, he was constantly under scrutiny from India. Mm-hmm. And every little thing that he did, uh, uh, you know, grandfather would uh, scrutinize that and uh, and he had to be always uh, on his toes. Well, so, your father was you know, the one who founded the ashram in South Africa, didn't he? Grandfather started the ashram, yeah. Okay, but your father is the one that continued it? He continued working there, and uh, and while uh, all the rest of the family went back with grandfather, uh-huh. my father remained and, and continued working there. And that's and where you were born, wasn't that's it, where in I South was born. Africa? Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't easy for him to uh, work there, you know, being under the scrutiny of uh, his father all the time uh, was very difficult. Yeah, because and I can understand his would father's uh, concerns too, because this philosophy was so new that he himself was still uh, discovering many aspects of it. And uh, so he just didn't want uh, anybody else, including his own family, uh, to uh, kind of go astray or or, or uh, misinterpret the philosophy. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, one can understand uh, that kind of uh, feelings, too. Yes, in retrospect, you know, you can understand. Every, the whole family was more or less under a magnifying glass. Everybody wants to watch every move. Right. Just like any celebrity today. Exactly. But it, when, when you're in the middle of it, it doesn't make it any easier. Mm. That's the problem. You know, you right. can look at it afterwards and understand it. Mm. Uh-huh. But uh, do you want to tell us uh, about your life then, if you were born at the ashram, weren't you? Yes, I was born at the ashram in Phoenix, uh, and we grew up there, my two sisters and I, and... Uh, uh, when we were growing up, uh, by then, you know, since much of the family and and uh, people who were living in the ashram with grandfather, they went away to India. There were not many people left in the ashram. Uh, kind of, they kind of dwindled, you mean? Yeah. And uh, so, um, you know, it was quite lonely, but, uh, uh, and everything had to be done by us uh, with the help of a of two families that continued to live there. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very hard life because uh, my father was asked if, you know, he was told by his, his father that if you want to live here and do this work, then you will have to uh, accept voluntary poverty. You can't live a normal life and earn money and, and so on. Mm. And my father agreed to that. So we were, um, you, you know, our uh, uh, livelihood and our income all depended on uh, what people gave mm-hmm. to the institution. It's that hard to live like that. Yeah, it was very hard. And, and I remember as a young boy growing up, um, I, you know, we, my father was bringing out a weekly uh, newspaper, which was also started by grandfather. Yeah. And uh, he was bringing that out, and, uh, and uh, you know, we were trying to sell that because that was uh, the way uh, of communicating with the uh, entire community and, uh, and showing them uh, the uh, nonviolent uh, approach, yeah. you know, educating them in, in the philosophy of nonviolence. And so, um, you know, I had to go out from door to door collecting subscriptions for this uh-huh. that was when I was a to teenager. make a living. Yeah, and, uh, and many of these people would tell me on my face, you know, he says, uh, we don't even read your paper, and they would show me all these papers stacked up in the corner. They didn't even bother to open the wrappers of it. Oh. And they, you know, would make such nasty remarks and and say that we are living on charity and, you know, all that kind of thing. And it really pained me a lot. Uh-huh. And that's why I decided uh, that you know, if I grow up and then if I'm uh, going to do this work, I uh, am going to uh, keep my livelihood apart from this work so that 
I don't want anybody to ever say to me or to my family and my children that we are living on charity. Mm -hmm. As we were told when uh, we were growing up, uh, you know, constantly. But uh, did you also have a lot of other problems living down there? Yeah, the other usual problems because of the uh, apartheid and the discrimination there. Uh, we were constantly, um, you know, judged by the color of our skin. Uh, I was beaten up a couple of times by white people and then by black people. and uh, It was a very hard time. And, uh, you know, on reflection now, uh, it amazes me that uh, a whole society was brought up in so much hate. Yeah. That everybody was hating everybody else. And, uh, I think you said you felt in the middle because you weren't white and you weren't black. Right, yeah. So I wasn't uh, accepted by the blacks, I wasn't accepted by the whites. And, uh, you know, it was a very uh, strange kind of uh, life. But this, you were, wasn't it your family was worried that you were going to be, what, that you were going to become angry and violent yourself? Yeah, they were because after the two experiences that I had of physical beatings, uh, it became uh, an obsession with me. I wanted to uh, be able to strike back again and, and uh, you know, be violent with people who were violent with me. Yeah, it's, it's a natural and, thing to do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for a young boy, you know, here you're in this kind of a position. Right. You want so um, I, I was getting very angry and, and frustrated, and they saw this, and, and so uh, they decided uh, that uh, it was time to go to India and, and uh, stay with grandfather and hopefully uh, be able to overcome this uh, problem. Mm -hmm. So they thought that going to live with your grandfather, he could help you then? Yeah to get away from those tendencies. Right. Mm -hmm. that he would help me uh, overcome the anger and, uh, you know, teach me how to deal with... Resentment uh, and everything. Yeah. You know, Arun, do you, what do you think would have happened if you would have stayed in South Africa? If you were to look back on it now, what do you think your life would have been like? Well, I think, uh, you know, judging from... Uh, my friends uh, who grew up with me yeah. and uh, their lives now, they seem to have uh, wasted their uh, lives, you know, achieved nothing. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think I would have been just like them. Yeah, because you uh, would have been in that kind of situation. I would have been situation. able to achieve anything. Um, if I had followed uh, the family tradition, and uh, opposed apartheid, I would have spent much of my time in prison. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what that would have affected me, how that would have affected me. You know, I tell people they come to crossroads in their lives mm. when you can go different directions. Yeah. And if you would have gone the other direction, you know, their lives would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. So they have to make a decision. So this was like one of the crossroads in your life. Yes, yes, especially, you know, as I said, uh, when growing up as a young teenager, I was a uh, um, victim of uh, not only the prejudices uh, in the larger society, but the uh, snide remarks of people in our own society who kept telling me that we were living on charity and, uh, you know, that... Huh? Uh, being very nice.